welcome to our first review in LucasArts Month. A month dedicated to the company that it was, the official creator of Star Wars video games. Now as you may know that is no longer the case, they have been shut down, however we're going to take a look at some of their best this month. Starting with this one, an excellent, excellent, let's just call it a third person shooter for now. Today we're talking about Shadows of the Empire. Let's get things started with the gameplay. Now yes, by today's standards this is a bare bones shooter, but in its day it was the best third person action game that I personally have ever played, and honestly it holds up pretty well. The shooting gallery sections are fun, however if you play these kind of games today it's going to show its age. You can't really aim down the scope as you can in modern games. There's an auto lock feature that you mainly use to shoot and it works pretty well. On top of that you also have sections that are done in space combat. Now admittedly it was done much better in Star Wars Battlefront 2, but it's not done horribly here, especially considering this is a N64 game. Now there is a section in this game that will make you rage. When I was a boy I rage quit at this section many times. I speak of course of the speeder bike chase. However when I replayed this section I found that it wasn't near as bad as I remember, but the c controls can be rather frustrating. There's also an excellent section right at the beginning of the game where you're playing the Battle of Hoth and you are in one of the snow speeders. It's probably one of the best ways this battle has been done, and it's been done in a lot of games. Now yes, if you're comparing it to say, Gears of War or Mass Effect, it's not going to hold up that well, honestly. But if you take it for what it is and just give it a playthrough, I think you're really going to enjoy yourself. So overall I give the gameplay a 5 out of 10. It's still fun, but by today's standards it's just average. Sorry. Next up we'll start with the graphics. I'm not going to lie to you, I feel really bad for this category because as you can see by today's standards of course these graphics are garbage. However, when you think about the fact that this game is over 15 years old, for its day these were top of the line graphics for a non-PC game. However, we judge by today's standards and that's why I have to give the graphics for Shadows of the Empire a 3 out of 10. Sorry guys, but hey, graphics aren't everything. Next up let's take a look at the soundtrack. If you're a Star Wars fan, this game is a nostalgia bomb. It has plenty of great themes, the sound effects are actually not bad, and the songs really put you into the moment. On top of that, blasters sound like blasters, ships sound like ships. It's almost like they're going into the Star Wars universe, it's really well done here. That's why overall the sound of this game earned a 7 out of 10. It is definitely above average, even for as old as it is. Next up we'll take a look at the story. Now the story of this game takes place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It starts with the battle on Hoth, and then continues on a rescue mission for Han Solo, ending on something that is particularly epic, but I'm not going to spoil it for you here if you haven't played it. Now you play as Dash Rendar, who is, I'll admit, a poor man's Han Solo. However, Solo is awesome, but so is this guy. You also meet up with some classic characters from the Star Wars license. This includes Boba Fett and IG-88. Both of those ball battles in particular were very fun to play, and I think you'll like them as well. On top of that, this game does a fantastic job of making you believe that this story could actually be canon without it being forced into the universe after the fact. It's almost as if they had planned for this story to take place as if in episode 5.5. Overall, I give the story of Shadows of the Empire an 8 out of 10. It was fantastic storytelling then, it's fantastic storytelling now. You need to play this story. It's an excellent, excellent game. Finally, let's take a look at customer care. This game came out back in 1996. Back then you didn't see a lot of games like this where they had clearly taken their time and had a lot of love for the source material. It impressed me back then and it still holds up today. Back then, if you remember, now, now PC games back then had this same level, but on a console, most of the games you saw back then were button mashing, they were repetitive, they were, or unless they were platformers. This is the first action game I can think of that really took, gave a shit about anything or anybody in its story. It did a fantastic job of keeping you affected, keeping you into the story. If only Star Wars games today could have this much respect for the license. With that said, overall I give customer care a 10 out of 10. This game is fantastic in every sense of the word. Overall, this game earns a 32 out of 50. It is definitely above average. Bottom line is, if you have the ability to play this game, you need to. Just as a Star Wars fan, it's a huge, huge pleasure to finally see a game that encompasses the Star Wars universe correctly. 
I would easily hold this up with any of the games people consider the best in the franchise. Whether that be KOTOR, or Jedi Outcast, or whatever you think is the best, I would guarantee you if you play this game, it'll be in your top 5. That's it for this game. For any other reviews or anything else game related, please head over to holdtheline.com. Until next time, my name is Vega Goose, saying that's my opinion. What's yours? I'll see you next time.